Welcome to 3.3 Truth Tables for Conjunctions and Disjunction Statements. All right, so we're going to get into some truth tables today. Um, these are actually pretty fun. Um, yeah, I know it sounds kind of silly, but I think you'll find that you like them, okay? And they're, they're things that, that kids do pretty well with. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So uh, we're going to talk about the negation of a statement. Okay, so we have to think today true or false. That's kind of what we're going to be talking a lot about. Okay, so the negation of a statement has the opposite truth value of the original statement. So the negation of true is false and the negation of false is true. So for instance, when we create a table, and you'll see when we set it up, if my P statement is true, let's pre just pretend, then not P has to be false. Or vice versa, if P is false, then not P is true. It just has the opposite, okay? So you can rewrite it as one table. P is either true or it's false. If P is true, then not P is false. If P is false, then not P is true, okay? One thing to kind of keep in mind is for the conjunction, it's only true, so if I have this conjunction statement, this and, it's only true if both components are true. So P would need to be true and Q would need to be true in order for that to be true. So let's look at this example really quickly over here in our truth table, okay? So we kind of go through it and we say, we're going across this way, okay? We go across in the rows. So if P is true, and Q is true. You can think of it this way, true and true. Well, since they are both true, we can go ahead and put a T here, because then P and Q is true, all right? This second row, true and false. Well, in order for this to be true, they both need to be true. So this one is false, okay? So we go here, false and true, they're not both false, or sorry, they're not both true, so that statement, P and Q is false. And then the same for this last one, false and false. Even though they're the same, they both need to be true in order for this statement to be true. So this last one is also false. One thing I wanna note really quickly, for a disjunction, this or statement, okay, in order for that truth value to be true, only one P or Q needs to be true, and then the whole thing is true. Okay, now we're going to get into actually constructing a truth table. We're always going to set it up the same way. So we want to be consistent with listing the four possible combinations of truth values for P and Q in the same order every time. So let's look at this right here. We always start this first two columns with P and Q. So I'm actually going to draw a line down there. Okay. Now, P is either true or it's false. So I just go through and I say, okay, P is true. We have true, true, and false, false. I always start my P column that way. Okay. Then with Q, Q if P is true, Q could be true, or if Q, P is true, Q could be false. If P is false, Q could be true, or if P is false, Q could be false. So we always start it this way. For P, it's true, true, false, false. For Q, we always alternate true, false, true, false. Okay, so now we want to construct this truth table for this statement right here, okay? So let's get practice reading this. We've got the negation, so not, and now it's a quantity, P and Q. So what we do is we essentially work inside out, and our last column is always going to be this entire statement, okay? So I know I can go ahead and put that in my last column. So my last column is not P and Q. Q. Okay, so we'll fill that out last. And now I work inside out. Well, the only thing inside of these parentheses, there's no other thing besides P and Q. So that's going to go here. 
So P and Q goes here. And now we just go through our truth values, okay? So in order for P and Q to be true, that conjunction, both P and Q must be true, okay? So we go through and we say, okay, true and true. Well, that must be true, so we can put a T. All right, we've got true and false, so this one must be false. False and true, this has to be false. False and false, since they're not both true, it's also false, okay? All right, so now this last column here, I'm just going to look here as a reference. So I'm essentially taking the opposite truth value of this column. So if P and Q is true, then not P and Q is false. If P and Q is false, then not P and Q must be true. And that goes for the rest of them. Since this is false, not P and Q must be true. And since this is false, not P and Q must be true. So those last two are both going to be true. Before moving on to this next example too, I want you to try to construct the truth table. Fill in all the pieces. So pause the video for a second, see what you can do, and then we'll, we'll check back. One thing I better note is they are missing two rows, so please change the table to look like this to start. Now go ahead and fill it in. Okay, did you fill that first row out correctly? So let's take a look. We want not P or not Q. So we need a column for not P, we need a column for not Q, and we need a column for the entire statement, okay? So if you didn't have that, make the corrections now. Otherwise, let's go in and fill out our truth table. So the next thing we want to look at is, did you fill out the first two columns correctly? P is true, true, false, false. Q is true, false, true, false. All right, so now I'm just looking at column P to determine what not P is. So if P is true, not P is false. If P is true, not P is still false. If P is false, not P is true. If P is false, not P is still true. All right, so now to fill out our column for not Q. So not Q, I'm going to look at my Q column here. All right, so if Q is true, not Q is false. If Q is false, not Q is true. If Q is true, not Q is false. And if Q is false, not Q is true. All right, so now our last statement, we are just comparing not P to not Q, and it's the or, okay? So that's what we have to keep in mind, this is an or. So in order for that statement, not P or not Q to be true, only one of those has to be true, either not P or not Q or both, okay? So taking a look, we are comparing not P, so false or false. So since both of them are false, that whole thing is false, okay? Next row, we have false or true. Since one of them is true, the whole thing is true. Third row, true or false. Since one of them is true, the whole thing is true. Then finally, the last row, true or true. Since they're both true, also true. Okay, the next thing we're gonna look at some vocabulary really quickly. So we're gonna talk about tautology. A tautology is a compound statement that is always true, okay? So in the end, the last column shows all true. A self-contradiction is a compound statement that is always false. So the last column is always false. So for instance, let's construct a truth table 
for P or not P. So P is already filled in, so now we need a not, oops, I hit the wrong thing. We need a not P, and then we need the whole thing, P or not P. Okay, so if P is true, not P is false, and if P is false, not P is true. And now to fill in that last statement, P or not P, right, we have a true or false. So since one of those is true, that whole thing is true. Then we have a false or true. Again, same thing, we have a true statement. So since that whole thing is true, we have ourselves a tautology. Okay. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Construct a truth table for P and not P. So again, we need a not P column, and then we need the whole statement P and not P. Okay, so if P is true, not P is false. If P is false, not P is true. All right, so now remember with the and, they both need to be true in order for the whole thing to be true. So we have a true and false, so that's false. We have a false and true, also false. So what do we have all together? Well, this whole last column is false, therefore we have ourselves a self-contradiction. Okay, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna determine the truth value of a compound statement without actually using a truth table. So, how can we do that? Well, let's look at this first example with good old Popeye and olive oil. All right, so the bar graph shows the distribution of looks for American men and women ranging from homely to strikingly attractive. So if we kind of take a look there. All right, we are given this compound statement. 2% of American women are homely, or more than half are good looking, and it is not true that 5% of American men are strikingly attractive. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to figure out what our simple statements are. Now remember, our simple statements are broken up by and, or, uh, if this, then that, etc. So I see this word or, Okay, I see the word and, and that's pretty much it. So I see two different breaking points, which means we have three simple sentences. So we can go ahead and say, all right, that P we could let be 2%, and I'm just going to write it, 2% um, of American women are homely. Now, is this true or false? Well, if we look at our graph here, here's the percent of homely, and it says for women, 2%. So we could go ahead and circle, well, that's true. Okay, what's our next simple statement? We should be able to see after the or, we have more than half are good looking. So we take a look at good looking, right? And more than half would be how many? Well, we should say more than 50%, and it's not. So we would say that this statement is false, okay? And then finally, our last simple statement is the 5% of American men are strikingly attractive. Okay, so again, if we look at our graph, all right, strikingly attractive. Okay, uh, for the men, we only have 2%, okay? And it said 5%. So we're gonna say false there. Now, you might be wondering why I didn't write the not 
portion here, okay? Because this can be used to negate that when we write our statement symbolically, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. All right, so now we do want to do this symbolically, right? All right, so we're going to write the compound statement. Well, let's see if you can figure that out. Go ahead and pause the video and write the statement symbolically. Did you get what I got? Notice my parentheses. Okay, why did I put parentheses here? Well, let's look back at this statement. We have a comma right before the and. Remember that comma represents grouping. So this first portion all goes together. So we have P or Q, that's together, that's grouped, and since this not is there and how we labeled our R value, we've got not Q. Okay, so now we're going to figure out the truth value without actually creating a truth table, okay? So all we're going to do is substitute the truth values for P, Q, and R, and then we'll kind of go through and simplify it, okay? So if we start with our original statement, P or Q and not, oh, I'm sorry, I made a mistake up above. Let's fix that. That should be an R up here. Let's see if I can scratch this guy right here. Right up here should be R, not R, okay? All right, so we have our statement, P or Q and not R. All right, so now we just substitute our truth values. We said P was true that we circled up above or Q was false and not R was false. Okay, so now we just go through. All right, well, let's think about what we said before. True or false. If it's true or false, what's the truth value? And we should note that it's true, right? And what is the truth value of not false? You should know that that's true. Okay, so now we have true and true. Well, since they're both true, we know it's true. So our truth value is true. All right, that's all we have for today. Come to class with questions and we'll go from there.